It's the weekend and it's time for your Barbie This is Today evening news update for Friday, February 25. Madam Justice Cicely Chase today declared that the constitutional motion challenging the validity of Senate and by extension Parliament is time sensitive. She made the comments as the matter resumed in the High Court today. Justice Chase told the virtual sitting that the matter was extremely important to the country and she ordered the attorneys to address the issues of law as preliminary points points and issues of fact. She said any other applications which are before the court will be heard thereafter. The case will resume next Tuesday and Wednesday when lawyers from both sides will make their submissions on the issues raised during today's sitting. The case brought by former Attorney General Adriel Brathway is asking the court to quash President Dame Sandra Mason's decision to reconvene Parliament. To news from Parliament, Government is getting pushed back from some landlords who are refusing to provide lodging for individuals on welfare because of its failure to pay rent on time. Speaking on the Appropriation Bill 2022 today, Senior Minister in the Prime Minister's Office, Dr. William Duguid, raised concern about the development. I have a great concern about this because many times we meet people who tell us that they've been to the Welfare Department the welfare department is prepared to assist them with a rent because they can't find housing, and housing is a big problem, and we have to accept that housing is a problem for us in this country. And they want to get um, a, a rental accommodation with a landlord, but they cannot find an amenable landlord to be able to, that will accept the welfare payment. And part of this is because uh, all of the landlords out there, I'm told, know full well that they will get paid, but the welfare department takes time, long time to pay them. In some instances, some people complain that it takes three months, four months to get that, to get that welfare check. I'm told that they don't pay first and last. And there's another aspect of it that we have to work on. And then the quantum that, that the welfare is prepared to pay. Because that 800 was set many years ago. Unfortunately, now the average rent for a two bedroom, one bathroom apartment, let's say, is in the thousand dollar range. So I want to know what plans are being made to address this issue. Government is in the process of developing a new policy for elder care in Barbados. Word of this from People Empowerment and Elder Affairs Minister Kirk Humphrey, who says his ministry has been allotted $76 million for the 2022-2023 financial year, which begins on April 1 to address some of the issues and challenges facing the island's seniors. This is one of the manifesto promises of the, this current administration, so it has certainly caught the attention of all of us and the need for us to be able to expand the alternative care program. For those who don't fully understand, this is where there is support offered to senior citizens' homes and nursing homes and so on to be able to house some of the elderly persons in the private sector and therefore keep the tension and the burden off of the main Ministry of Health hospital. I should also say to you that this program, though it directly impacts on the elderly, is really a program that is situated in the Ministry of Health and Wellness and not necessarily with the Ministry. But I do support your view that there is a need for us to be able to expand that program. We've seen the costings. I've even heard it described as elder abuse to leave persons in the hospitals. And therefore, we know that you know, there is a need for us to be able to offer these private accommodations. Home Affairs Minister Wilfred Abram says the COVID-19 outbreak at the island's prisons is under control. Earlier this month, reports surfaced that the prison was experiencing another outbreak of the viral illness. Abrams reported that prison officials were able to contain the spread of the virus. The situation at the prison is in hand. I mean, we went through this before. We know exactly what protocols to enforce. Um, and a prison is a special place. You're able to put restraints that you can't necessarily do someplace else. So it, although things spread fast in the prison, it's also easier to get it under co control. It was difficult the first time. We learned a lot from the first experience. Um, COVID is going to get in the prison from time to time, is how you deal with it. I, we had no major issues at the prison, and I think it is entirely under control. The security at the prison has not been compromised, but obviously we have to have a quarantine period where things might be disrupted, like court visits and whatnot. But our aim is to get things back as quickly as possible to normal, and we're well underway. Abrams, who's also the Member of Parliament for Christchurch East, today donated a variety of school supplies to all of the learning institutions in his constituency. 
He said the project had been ongoing since the beginning of his tenure as MP. For the last four years, we've been making donations of things that students need. Um, when schools were still in session, we, every year we did a donation of the exercise books and the art pads and pencils and pens. And we've upgraded that now to include those things, also masks, sanitizer, face shield, backpacks. And for some of the nursery school kids, we also give toys as well. It's been a difficult time that the children have had. Right? They've been through a lot. Um, it has been rough on the parents, it's been rough on the kids. There's an important transition for them to get back into school because they need to be able to see each other face to face, interact with teachers face to face, to be able to get on top of their schoolwork and even develop children need socialization. So this is for us saying, you know what, don't worry about the little things, we got them covered. Don't worry about the books, don't worry about, we have all of those covered. We are gonna give you a source for you, whatever it is that you need to complete your education, to get ahead, to try to make this transition as easy as possible for you. Now to the latest COVID-19 update, the Bastille Santos Public Health Laboratory recorded 195 new COVID-19 cases, 83 males and 112 females, from the 1,263 tests carried out on Thursday. The cases comprised 42 persons under the age of 18 and 153 who were 18 years and older. There were 95 people in isolation facilities and 2,123 in home isolation. To date, the virus is... There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional happenings, as the world remains on edge after Russia invaded Ukraine, Several Jamaican students are hunkered down in shelters as they await evacuation. We get more in the support from CVM Television. CVM Live understands that there's now a 16-hour martial lockdown in the city and hundreds of people are being held in several bunkers as Russian military invades the country. In an exclusive interview with CVM Live, one medical student says he's worried he and the other Jamaicans in his bunker may soon run out of food. The metro that I am staying in right now we have about five Jamaicans here, but other Jamaicans are deployed. Other Jamaicans are deployed in other metro stations at the moment. We have food and and water. We bought some snacks, but we don't know how long this will last for because we don't know if we'll be in the metro for a long while. Because from what we're hearing right now, outside there's a lot of explosions. He says he's terrified as he's never experienced anything like this. And although currently safe, he says he needs a way to evacuate the hotspot as soon as possible. On the international front, as the Russian army continues its assault in Ukraine, NATO Secretary General Jan Stomberg says the alliance was deploying arms of its combat ready response force and as will their continue to land. send weapons to Ukraine. Now, with official support from Moscow, we they could the try again to expand TV. their control. So what we see now is a full-fledged invasion of Ukraine from multiple directions with air, sea and land capabilities. Uh, we see, of course, that they're moving towards uh, Kiev. We also see uh, the rhetoric, uh, the messages, uh, which is strongly indicating that the aim is to um, change government, to change uh, and remove um, the democratically elected government in Kiev. The NATO allies continue to provide support to Ukraine, and it was actually at the meeting uh, today at the uh, NATO summit with uh, EU and Finland and Sweden, uh, allies announced uh, and also 
uh, uh, informed all their allies about uh, the type of uh, weapons, the type of uh, support, and some of that also includes air defense uh, systems. So, so NATO allies have and continue to provide support military. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.